Joining me now, Jitin Jain, cyber security expert, Andrew K.P. Leung is international and uh, independent China strategist. Uh, joining me from Hong Kong, we also have Ankit, who is a victim from Delhi. Another victim is Aditya Sharma. Before I get the voices of those who have suffered at the hands of these this uh, loans, a loan app scam, Jitin, coming to you, several Indians have ended their lives owing to harassment by un by these recovery agents of unregulated digital lending apps, mostly linked to entities based in China. Probe agencies are now cracking the whip on such apps that lure customers into debt trap. But why has it taken so long? Because one may say that these predatory lending mechanism has been there for pretty long now. I think, look, Maria, I think from last one year, uh, I have spoken on multiple channels and several times on your channel. Yes. That, see, these are not predatory apps who are just indulging in obnoxious interest rate of 250% or 500% and, you know, uh, forcing people to commit suicide and all those things. There were bigger issues involved, issues of malware, issues of blackmail, and the, you know, invisible, invisible uh, you know, involvement of Chinese, uh, or, uh, you know, origin people of structuring fake ID cards and Aadhaar cards from India, and then doing money laundering, sending money back to China. In last couple of months, again, you know, uh, on your channel, we uh, did a show where we said that, you know, it is yes. completely possible for government to put an end to this by doing two simple things. A, every single app, except the ones which are whitelisted, two, we have to figure out what these NBFCs are doing because these loan, uh, you know, fraud scams cannot survive without the backing of an NBFC. So which are those NBFCs which are giving indirect licenses, opportunities to these people? Hmm. So once you scrutinize the role of NBFCs, you'll figure out how the money is flowing, who are the people involved. And number three, I think 500% interest, 600% interest for three months. And they're not only targeting poor people, they are also targeting youngsters who are in 20, 18 to 26 yes, and colleges so that is the who age need group. quick money, you know, yes. I mean, sometimes to date and all. Yes, and then they are being commit, you know, talking. driven to commit suicide. But Maria, there is a bigger issue of Chinese money laundering and blackmail, yes. which is worth investigating in deep detail because there are people, you know, children of highly influential people hmm. who have been blackmailed in the past to seek favors from their parents, hmm. otherwise threat of blackmail and then, you know, making them do things which are illegal in nature. So we have to look at it from a national security point of view, not purely from a financial fraudulent point of view. Yes. Andrew, you know, th this is like waging another kind of war against the country. If uh, people are driven to suicide, and the fact is that there is money laundering, and I agree with Jitin when he says so, that is happening through these apps. Uh, what kind of uh, nuisance is China trying to create through these apps? Well, I don't think it's very fair for you to equate, or for any country to equate this kind of crimes, uh, which happen around the world. It happened in Hong Kong, it happened in China itself, happened in Taiwan, happened in Southeast Asia, uh, to equate all of them to, to China. Uh, I don't think it's very fair. But having said that, though, uh, this is the, uh, the kind of online crimes. Uh, is a serious um, a kind of phenomenon. As I said, um, I mean, China uh, itself is cracking down on it. Uh, and then a Parent lot of companies are registered in, Kong, in China, uh, Shenzhen, Beijing. Well, Those mean, are the details that had come in. And also, only because there is encryption at multiple levels, the security team here in India or investigating authorities could not do much. So it's high time China takes the blame for all the crimes that they are committing in India. So certainly they realize that this is a space where they can enter and it's and they are continuing to fool our investigating agencies. Well, there are online... They have found, uh, they have found loopholes because of these NBFCs and that is the reason why they are trying to get away with it. Well, online criminals uh, operate everywhere. Uh, as I said, um, in the, uh, China itself is cracking down on them, and other countries are, are uh, also doing the same. Uh, they happen also in uh, the Western countries. Okay, uh, Jitin, can I it said, be seen from, the, from the point of view of what Andrew was saying, that why look at it only because it's China, because it's evidently these are Chinese loan apps, and uh, not blame China, though. Because similar okay, loan let's, app, uh, let's, you know, online frauds are happening in other countries. Yeah, but in every other country, mostly at somewhere down the line in the it's, back end, these the Chinese people are, are Chinese. involved. Yes. That's the whole thing. Hmm. Let's take Andrew at the face value. Hmm. Let's assume that China condemns all these activities and financial frauds, and they are a very clean economy. Hmm. So let's return the money, you know, uh, the proceeds of loot and plunder. 
the money you have stolen from our economy, money you have looted from our people, first thing would be to hand over these people for Indian justice system, revert all the money, repatriate back to India so that these poor people can be compensated. And this, let's proceed with the investigation jointly. What is stopping it? It's very simple. Okay, Andrew, come clean. Unless wow. your national avatar of speaking something else, doing something else so, and creating destruction okay, in the so, world everywhere, so, like terrorism that you block, you know, listing yeah, of this te is uh, terrorism. Yeah, this is financial terrorism visibly. Bit. And then, then support Pakistan and then le give lectures of world peace. Okay. If you are, do not, do, um, if you really are interested in a serious talk, and if you do not have ill intentions, then let's have do two simple things: hand over the people, revert the okay, uh, Andrew, of loot and plunder. Andrew, system. Andrew, will that happen? Well, I th all I can you say. You know, first like, there is no no acknowledgement. Uh, you know, Jitin. Then why will they actually well, re return the proceeds of crime? No, we will give that out. We will give the name of citizens. We will give the account number. You agree to return the money. Our investigators will come. Okay. Andrew, a quick response, and then I bring in the victims. Well, if I can, if I am allowed a little bit of time for I to respond, if I if I may, okay. Um, I, I, all I can say is that criminals, regardless of nationality, should be brought to justice. You know, whether they are Chinese, whether they are Indian, whether they are American, um, well, criminals are criminals. So let's yeah, but not in case of China, because because for this is true for every democracy in the world, for every peace-loving society, that terrorist, irrespective of their nationality, should be brought to book okay. and should be sent to jail. Let, but for let, China, the principle is something let's different. Let's listen to the if stories the of those.